great to be here, it's great to have everyone here and to congratulate ourselves on a huge achievement because it's been a team effort. And so kickoff, I mean officially we, we started in April this year, but this really is the kind of uh, the, the kickoff event and something which I hope everyone's going to really enjoy. So the project looks into whether you can use something like a smartphone and a wearable device, the kind of things people use to monitor fitness and activity, whether these things can tell you something about someone's clinical condition. And we're looking at three different disorders, depression, uh, multiple sclerosis and epilepsy, to test whether uh, these sorts of devices which tell you how much someone's doing, what sort of, sort of activity they're doing, what their sleep's like, what their speech is like, whether these things can actually tell you something about their, their current disease status, and also whether it actually indicates whether they might be about to have a relapse in their disorder. Today what happens in, in healthcare is that a lot of information is exchanged uh, during clinic visits, but clinic visits are relatively infrequent. Everything that happens with the patients, with their disease state and how they are evolving between the visits while they're going about their daily lives, we have a very little window into. What we want to use is to really take advantage of revolutionary changes, advances that have happened in wearable devices, smartphones, mobile computing. We want to take advantage of these technologies and really understand how people are doing as they go about their daily lives. So we want to reuse the data that you're already generating by using your telephone, for example. We want to reuse the data that you may be already generating because you were a wearable. So we, we don't want to create additional new technology footprint. What we in fact want to do is that the data that you are already creating, the digital footprints that you're already leaving, can we reuse that data in a medical context? Can we reuse that data to help you be managed better? Most people have a smartphone nowadays and you, you have a, a device which actually produces a lot of data which actually is potentially really uh, informative. So the idea has been around for a, for a little bit um, that you could actually use this to inform clinical practice uh, but it hasn't really been tested at an, on a sort of ambitious scale like we're trying now. When it comes to being able to sense how people are doing using remote technologies, brain disorders are a great place to start because uh, as people with CNS or brain diseases manifest symptoms that can be detected by technology. For example, there are changes in behavior, there are changes in how they sleep, there are changes in how they move, there are changes in how they socially interact, and these signals are, are well suited to, to being detected by technology. The project brings together leading experts in certain disease areas, so we've got some um, leading experts in multiple sclerosis, in epilepsy, and depression, and these are international um, expertise. And then we've got fantastic technical expertise, so uh, individuals who are really leading the, the field in terms of uh, the field of bioinformatics, which is, is really using a kind of big data to uh, inform uh, clinical subjects like uh, you know, this issue about whether someone's going to relapse. And it involves taking a huge amounts of data and processing them effectively. And then critically, we've got a lot of expertise in patient involvement. If we're doing something kind of in a bubble and not really relating to what patients' experience is like, it's just not going to work. So we've got a lot of expertise in terms of running focus groups, understanding what patients want. We have patients um, who, are actually, who are actually researchers in their own right taking part in these and lots of representation from patient organisations across Europe. A project like this, which requires expertise in mobile technologies and streaming analytics and clinical expertise and, and, and expertise around regulatory pathways and clinical care pathways, it truly is multidisciplinary. It truly brings together the informatics and IT revolution with the medical revolution. Overall, it's going to reduce cost. You know, it's an age-old saying that prevention is better than cure. Now, if you could actually predict and preempt a relapse, we know that we have potentially avoided a hospitalization, we have avoided expensive treatment, and, and, and these are the kind of savings that, that we will have to demonstrate. We, you know, I don't think that we expect that people should take our word for it, 
but the goal of radar is to develop the system, develop the technologies that can then be shown in the real world, providing real benefit. I think potentially the project has huge um, implications wider than the disorders we're actually studying. So virtually any clinical disorder uh, which involves long-term disease management, whether that's diabetes, um, a pain condition, rheumatoid arthritis, uh, or say early dementia. The capacity for these sorts of devices to actually give you information which is informative for clinical practice and tells you something more objective about the person's current state is potentially huge. At the end of five years, we'll really have a much better idea about whether these technologies give information which is clinically useful and informative.